Welcome to Dandy Soap DIY channel. I'm Elizabeth, and as you can see here, we're going to repurpose some ponytail holders, some scrap fabric, some burlap, and we're going to cut some half inch by five inch long fabric strips. The raggier, the better. And you're simply going to take and tie those on to the ponytail holder. I'm using a lark's head knot, or you can call this a cow hitch knot. It took about 23 to fill this ponytail. But as you will find, some of them will take more, some will take less. This can be for your primitive home decor or your modern farmhouse decor, depending on how fancy or how raggy you make them. You can tea stain them and coffee dye them. So stick around because we're gonna make four different flowers and we're gonna make us a wooden barrel container out of clothespins. Now I'm showing you here how I've cut some cardboard. And on this particular flower, you will have to cut cardboard for each individual flower because the ponytail holder gets stretched. So upcoming, our next flower in line and a burlap center. A flower and now I'm gonna make a few more. So this is one and I glued my burlap center on it so it be this way and added a stick to hold it by and I'm just once again taking a ponytail holder and it took about 23 of these strips and I'm just folding them and using a lark's knot lark's head knot just pull it through and then just go all the way around that band doing the same thing. Now, I meant to tell you guys, because the ponytail holder stretches out, you'll want to cut your cardboard centerpiece for each individual one. That's why you see me tracing each one of them. Then I just get a general size of it and I go out from it and make it a little bit bigger than the opening. That way I can ensure that it is going to fit on this side. And then I cover it with my burlap. Our primitive sunflower is really top heavy. So make sure that once you glue your burlap on and place it directly in the center on the front to give it that true puffiness of a sunflower, and you'll place your wooden dowel on the rear Reinforce that wooden dowel with a piece of cardboard over the top. And then I trimmed it out with some cotton twine to truly give it a primitive decor sunflower and that southern country appeal. I've got some burlap flowers to go along with these. I traced those out with the twine. They look so gorgeous. Look how big they are. So I'm going to take some burlap and I'm going to cut off, let's see what we've got here. I'm going to cut off 18 inches. Then it says raggedy over here on these edges and so forth. I'm not really terribly worried about it. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull out these middle strands. All that in the center and you guys have probably seen videos of this sort and you basically just fold it and you're going to glue that edge to the other and it doesn't take a lot just enough to get it to stay closed for you so be real careful got this big long piece now and we can go two ways we can either do the whole you know roll and wrap thing like that twist 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 or we can just plain roll it like that and then that way you can flower it out as so there are several different ways to do it I think because I want to make 
more than one out of this strip, I'm going to go right here and cut this in half. Just use a bit of glue to get it rolled. I'm just going to roll with it. It don't have to be tight. Okay, for the centers, you can put about anything. A button would be cute. Um, if you want to do a G-twine button, the way I do it, I take some of the G-twine from the previous and regular G-twine, just roll them together. And then I start folding it back on itself and going in a little circle. You can put this on cardboard if you like. It works just as well if you hold to it and let it cling to itself no bigger than I'm gonna need voila we have our little button daisy there I'll do this one the same way okay this next one we're just gonna cut us a square here I don't think we need it quite that big. And I have a six inch strip here. What I'm gonna do is I am going to cut it into three strips. So to make the burlap strip flowers, you're gonna take those strips, cut you a little square piece of cardboard and glue one side and we'll glue the other, and then place three total on there before you glue it in the center. I'm gonna put a button in the center of these. And sometimes you can put two buttons. Makes them look exceptionally cute. Burlap strip flowers are among the primitive flower favorites because you can make them wide strips, narrow strips, rag them out, use fabric, or just about anything, including string. And as you can see, it is cute. Okay, and one last flower I want to show you guys using the mesh. We're going to use some zip ties. And you can go ahead and you can make it round if you want. Or you can make them small. Surprise guys, yes we are using zip ties and repurposing an onion bag mesh. So you'll make five petals and trim off the excess plastic, wrap the mesh around your zip tie, and before you let go of it, wrap it with some cotton twine and use your hot glue to glue the cotton twine around the top edge just so it'll make it pop and stand out. This is beautiful in your modern farmhouse decor and it qualifies as a primitive flower. So before you throw those away, you might want to hang on to them and make you some, well, fishnet or onion bag mesh daisies. Now coming up, stay tuned, because we're going to make us a clothespin wooden barrel as our container to put all these beautiful flowers into. Grab you a piece of cardboard, cut you a little circle there, glue your five petals into place, and then you're going to use a button or whatever you desire as your center for your face. Add a wooden dowel, and there you go. Pretty daisy. For this project, I'm going to use my clean tin can. If you guys uh, don't know how to get that to where you don't have a sharp there is actually a can opener that you can use, and I've had mine for years from Tupperware, but they have them on Amazon, 
and it clamps down like this and it actually unadheres the lid so that this is clean and it's not sharp and you don't have to worry about cutting yourself. So that's how I get this smooth edge. And I'll take a picture of it and throw it on the video here. It unseals the can simply by turning the handle on the top. They're easy to locate and I'll put a link below. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these clothes bins and we're going to take them apart into two pieces. And the idea is we're going to put them on this can, but I'm going to do it a little bit different than what you've maybe seen on other videos. Now, the clothespins are slanted. And the great thing about this is I can utilize that slant to my advantage. So the rolled piece on one side, but then upright, the inside is going to be on the outside here. And I'm going to slide that wedge under here. And I want to attach them such as that. And then that way, the when they're glued together, the edge will catch each other. But you'll have to do these in succession, one to the other. So it's probably better to put the first one down. And that is the inside on being attached to the outside of the can. Main thing when you attach them is just making sure that you go all the way to the bottom of the can down here. And they should line up pretty good. And then this one, the inside is going to be turned towards the can. And that little round edge is going to go right on that lip. And then that's going to lay against that one. So yes, it's going to be up a little bit, but just make them flush. And so I'm just going to put my glue there. And I love Sure Bonder. Use Sure Bonder glue for better bonding. And then once they're lined up, they should lay together just like that. Then sponge and just kind of scratch it up a little bit. You don't have to per se knock the shine off, but just hit it real quick and go around there and they'll give you better adhesion. So now we have our barrel can covered to look like a barrel per se. Barrel vase, a wooden barrel vase. And I am going to actually use my agave chalk paint by Plaid. Uh, you guys, I am a Plaid ambassador now. They are sponsoring me. And these are some colors I already had. So you can pre-dampen your brush before you get started. And I'm going to put a coat of the agave on here. I'm actually using one of the brushes from the sets from Dollar Tree as well. And for your Plaid products, Waverly is made by Plaid. So I will have a link in the description box underneath this video to where you can click on it and go check out the Plaid paints. So now that my agave chalk paint has soaked in and dried up. I want to show you guys how you can really dress something up and make it look really vintage using the home decor folk art wax. Now I have bought this at Hobby Lobby when it was on sale prior to getting my plaid ambassadorship and they had sent me a lot of stuff too and I will show you these brushes that I got. I bought these from off of Amazon. You'll find the link in the description box below. These are for chalk and wax paint brushes. This is a small set and they are perfect for this particular project that we're doing. You can see the size of them. And you can use these if you have your brushes. They work great. And I'm just going to use the tin lid that come off of another can that I had used. We could use this round one, but I think for what I'm doing here, I might just use the flatter one per se. And all you do with this is you do not pre-dampen your brush. You put a little wax there and you just work it into the bristles. You do a swirly, tap, 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 swirl, tap, tap, tap. And this is actually the white wax. 
and once you get it worked into the bristles as you push it in you see how it starts traveling up the bristles and that is perfect and no more than I put on there should be sufficient for this so basically you can brush it of course or you can swirl it and it is a white wax so it blends really well with the chalk paints that's what it's designed for and depending on how much effect you want because you're not going for full coverage here you're going for effect and this will really give it that vintage look and as you can see you can pick that up pretty quick you can hit areas so these vintage looking bases that you guys see that sell for so expensive this is why because this is another technique uh, that is added another step to the finishing now this wax will do more than one thing one it is going to give it this vintage style so the more you work it in and let it hit just wherever it will it's almost like a, a massage in the wood so it actually gives it a finish and it seals it in and um, it'll give it a nice satiny look and a sheen and it doesn't take it long for it to dry and be finished so in the areas that you want more accentuating you can hit it a little more now because my agave was still damp when I started working this in it's in the bristles and that's okay I'm just fine with that and as you can see you can just work it so I'll have a link to these brushes in my description box below that will take you over there or you can click on the link for the Amazon store and I really appreciate if anytime you purchase something from Amazon you use my affiliate link um, it takes a long period of time to accumulate enough for them to pay you anything but the idea is that you'll use it and it can help me cover my expenses for my channel and bringing uh, products to you and show you how they work and what they can and can't do and give you a product review on them. So now I've got that wax worked in and it as it dries you will see more of the wax sheen on it. You do have the option of adding more but it's really not necessary for the look that I'm going for. So let's set that aside and let it cure out the brush cleaner. Highly recommend it. But that, again, is the white wax, home decor, folk arc. And uh, this goes along with their chalk paints as well that you've seen me use. Our, and Waverly is also by Platt. So here are some of the folk arc chalk paints. So you can see what it looks like once the wax dries and it just has this beautiful cascade off of it so i'm going to dress it up even more and by the way on the clothespins that one and that one were oddballs and they just kind of stuck out so you know it's not perfect and i don't want it to be perfect but i'm going to start my little string here and you might want to wrap it more than once my little agave barrel base okay so here's our burlap strip flowers that we made kind of like daisies and I just love the button on them here are our burlap bushed out rosette daisies that we made and here are our ponytail holder rag tie sunflowers here is the Motley Crew. We have our barrel and we just need to put us something on the inside to weight it down. So I put me some styrofoam down in the bottom and I'm looking for my tallest flower.
and voila we have our beautiful little barrel vase and all of our primitive handmade i've had a wonderful time making these primitive decor modern farmhouse flowers with you guys thanks for coming along now upcoming we have some useful items more repurposing recycling upcycling and some sewing ahead of us so until the next diy well i'll be crafting y'all this is elizabeth over now bye guys <laughs>